Hi everybody and welcome to another edition of Yonkers This Week. I'm Ali Madano and here with me is Mayor Mike Spano. Mayor, thanks for joining us. Great to be here. Today's show we're talking all about the budget, what it includes, what it means, and how it'll affect you, the taxpayers. Very recently, Mayor Spano unveiled his executive budget proposal for the upcoming fiscal year. It was just over a billion dollars and that's an increase of 21.3 million dollars or approximately 2%. Now this budget remains within the property tax cap for the fourth consecutive year, capitalizes on federal funding, contributes to the school district, and reorganizes staff to eliminate vacant positions without any layoffs. So let's get right into it. What is the biggest fiscal challenge facing Yonkers right now? Well, let's, let's face it, our biggest fiscal challenge has been the same fiscal challenge that we've all uh, heard about uh, for, for probably going on 50 years now. Uh, the continuing Underfunding of educational dollars coming out of out of the state capital uh, to our city school district. Uh, the taxpayers have dealt with it. Uh, we have put a tremendous amount of money into uh, offsetting the, the deficiencies that come out of the state capital. But at the same time, you know, I I, I would love to show somebody, you know, just a, this one very very simple chart because I think that there are those who will, will say, you know, do the taxpayers of Yonkers truly put enough into their own educational system. And and I and and I'm always quick to say, you know what? We always put um, more than our fair share into our educational system. Uh, and we should because the education of our children is the, probably the most important thing that we do. It's the most important service. But it's also important to keep it in perspective. You know, if you take uh, the other big cities in New York, so if you take uh, uh, outside of New York City, so if you take Buffalo, if you take Rochester, and you take Syracuse, and they all spend uh, a number of dollars that are local dollars for each child, and a number of dollars that are state-sponsored dollars, right? Uh, and that's what we do here in Yonkers. Uh, if you took the per pupil amount of money that is spent in Buffalo, and it is nowhere near what the per pupil cost to the local taxpayer in Yonkers is. As a matter of fact, I'll go you a step further. If you take Buffalo, and Rochester, and Syracuse, and you add the total number per pupil from each city, and you add them together, Yonkers is still more per pupil than the three sister cities upstate. And, and that's a really uh, important point. The city is doing well on a number of fronts, uh, but, this, but, but we, continuing, uh, we continue to get dragged down by, uh, by the, the, uh, the fact that there's a school aid formula that just doesn't work for our city. And um, you know, last year we had an infusion of help uh, from the state capitol to help the, uh, the Board of Education with uh, a funding mistake that they made. Why it was important that we got the money from the state? Well, we got that $28 million from the state because it helped fill the gap. Mm -hmm. um, well, why is know, it important to again have it this year? Because well, that's a question that everybody's that's asking. That's right, because even when the school district was spending money it didn't have, mm -hmm. it still didn't have music, art, a good solid sports program. Uh, we still have classroom sizes that are 30 children or more in a classroom. So imagine this. We're spending 30 million more than we currently have, and we still don't have the things that, that our kids have in Hastings and Scarsdale and Pelham and all the communities around us. So that's why that $28 million is so important, because it kept the status quo. And so for the state to pull the rug out from underneath the taxpayers of Yonkers at this particular time, uh, when things are actually starting to, 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 to turn around, uh, it, it just says, it, it says to me that um, we need to reset. You've said hit the reset button. What did you mean by that? Who did well, you mean that for? Well, because, you know, what do we want? You know, we want to reduce the class size. We want our children to have music, mm -hmm. art, right? We, th these are important. These are very important programs. For their, their education. Development. We want them to have a good sports program. Of course we want them to, you know, to have all the other basics that go with a good education. But these are the things that, uh, that enhance an educational experience and, uh, in our city and help foster the, the future of a young person. So, uh, so we're going back to Albany. 
we have a budget that has uh, $28 million in needs. We may not get it all, I understand that, but let's put one foot in front of the other and, make, and take positive steps forward, because that's what we should do every day. We're talking about a, a number that's 5% of our total budget, or at least our educational budget. It's, uh, it's something that can be fixed. The state has the ability to fix it. They helped us last year. We need their help again this year. And you've made it a point to say we're not throwing in the towel to maybe some people that have, that there's still plenty of time to advocate, that it's uh, not t time to think about cuts, it's time to think about advocating. There were um, a number of people who said, no, the state budget's over, um, you know, now it's up to you guys to finish the job. You know what, uh, what, is, ha what has Yonkers done? And I think that's the question. What, is, what has your mayor and your city council done? Well, you know what, uh, when, when this came to light, we went to work. When this budget deficit came to light, we went to work. And what did we do? Well, we merged uh, four different departments within the government, within the Board of Education and the city. Uh, the city, uh, working with the city council, put up almost $10 million to fund, uh, to fund those mergers. We continue to fund those mergers. We're not taking that, those dollars back from the Board of Education. Uh, we have increased the maintenance of effort. That's the money that the city gives to Yonkers Board of Education. We increased it to historical levels. It's uh, the most that the city mm -hmm. has ever given for education. Uh, the, the city council, along with myself, passed $40 million in special financing, special bonds to, to, uh, to bridge the gap. Uh, the, the, the mayor and the, and the city council are crafting a budget where the Board of Education, not the Board of Education, but the city side pays the debt service for those bonds, for the money that went to the Board of Education. So it's really unfair to say that the city hasn't done enough. The city has done everything. And, uh, and it's really up to our partners at the state level to get to the table, to go to that. Our, I know our delegation is a hardworking delegation, mm -hmm. Senator Cousins, Senator Latimer, they're friends of mine. They are hard workers, Assemblywoman Pretlow and Assemblywoman Shelley Mayer hard workers, but they need to get in the assembly, uh, the assembly members need to get to their leadership and, and need to get to the speaker. Uh, in the Senate, um, they need to get to the president of the Senate mm -hmm. and to the governor. Uh, and once we can get uh, those three people together uh, with their priorities, because they're going to have priorities to close out the year, everyone has priorities, we want to make sure Yonkers is one of those priorities. Uh, I'm, confident that the governor will be there for us, uh, at least in some degree, because he has been uh, in the past, but the governor is, uh, um, you know, he's not the type of person you can go to with the handout. Uh, he wants you to, to prove uh, what All it is your needs are done, right. and what have we done, and I think we have a, we have a good story to tell. Uh, when that story is told, we should do pretty well uh, with the state capitol. Now, what can some people in Yonkers residents that might be asking ourselves, how can we rally behind our representatives in Albany? What can we be doing right now and in the next two months? Lots of things people can do. Uh, some of them are very, very simple. Uh, an email, a phone call, um, a letter, a letter to the editor, um, you know, uh, showing up at a rally, a number of rallies that, that either PTAs will do or uh, maybe the teachers will do. But these are the things that people uh, do in this country. They uh, are that able to speak change. to their government mm -hmm. and this will affect change. Uh, and, and don't you know, keep it uh, professional, keep it about our kids, keep it about what are the things that our kids lack that school districts right next to us have and how can we uh, gain enough funding to make it all to make it all work because you know why at the end of the day our kids are just as bright they're just as energetic uh, and 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 they they just not getting the same opportunities and we want to make sure that they have the same opportunities is there a common misconception with Yonkers being in Westchester County that we people might think we have those things for our children and we don't where we should be put on a playing field with some of the bigger cities that don't or it, haven't in it, the past. It's, it's funny you say that and that is one of the things that, uh, that that we deal with. I think that when we go to the state capitol, I know I had dealt with it when I was a legislator, uh, they just see rich Westchester County. Uh, they think we all go to we all go to the supermarket and limousines, some. Right. 
of the legislators think that. Not all, but some do. And, um, and, and so it's important that we tell the story. There's a wonderful story to be told here. Uh, there's a, it's a great city with a great future, but there are uh, inequities that, have, that are historical that have been there. And, and you don't solve a 50-year problem mm -hmm. in, in, you know, in 10 years. It just doesn't happen like that. Uh, but the way you solve problems is, is, is to do um, what my father always told me to do. You know, my father is a, is a Marine, not was a Marine, but is a Marine. And he always told me, when you look at the top of the mountain, uh, if you want to get to the top of that mountain, don't look at the top because you never get there. And I said, so what do you do? He goes, you look down at your feet and you go one step at a time and you'll make it. And that's what we're doing here. And certainly education is a large part of this, but there's some other points I want to get to. Union contracts was a big thing for this year. Since uh, you met and presented your budget last year, six union contracts have been settled. Why was that something that needed to happen rather than just something that as mayor you wanted to happen? You know why the those contracts were really bleeding us uh, to have uh, to have six or have eight of our unions uh, without contracts for six years. You know what that means? That means that whenever we come to terms with an agreement, there's going to be retro payments. What we did was we worked with our labor leaders. Um, they're tough. They're they're probably you know Yonkers is a tough town. And you would expect our labor leaders to be tough too, and uh, and we went to work though, and you know what. The, the labor leaders came to the table with a number of givebacks. Uh, each and every union, uh, while they did get uh, a package that involved, that where they did get raises, they also gave back. Um, and that was an, an effort to help the taxpayers of Yonkers, to help us balance our budgets, and, uh, and, and, that's, and, I, and I say thank you to them for that. And let's talk property tax cap too. This is the fourth consecutive year, your fourth budget, that it's remained within that tax cap. Why is it so important? It's, it's very important that we um, limit the property tax increases to when we really need them. And, uh, and, and it's been tough, uh, but we've been living within the property tax cap for the past four years. Uh, it's, uh, it's important to give some type of relief to the homeowner who's paying those property taxes by at least limiting the, the growth. We're streamlining our government. We're running a good government. Uh, we're not out of the woods by any stretch of imagination, uh, but we're getting there. You know, the economy's growing. Yonkers has low unemployment. That's good. Our, our government is, is operating more efficiently, and the bondholders are giving us credit for that, and now they have us rated in, in an A category. That's good. Um, you try to buy a house in Yonkers these days, it's very difficult. There's not much stock left. People are buying here. Uh, the people are investing here, and uh, and people love to come here and visit. I mean, we have now uh, three new, brand new hotels being built right now as we speak, uh, with with another one that will be proposed in the next uh, month or so. Uh, lots happening. Uh, it's a, it's an exciting time uh, to to be a Yonkers resident, and hopefully it continues this way. But it doesn't mean we don't have challenges. We have them, um, but we uh, we take them head on and uh, we turn them into opportunity to do something good. Well, certainly seems like a good note to end on, so thank you very much for joining us. Great to be here. We are back with Yonkers This Week. I'm joined in studio now by Chris St. Lawrence, Director of Waterfront Development for the City, and Haifa Bint Kadi, Director of Community Engagement through the Arts with Groundwork Hudson Valley. Thank you both for joining us. Thanks for having us. And we are talking about something that the city I know is very excited about coming up, and that's Yonkers Arts Weekend. It's the second annual citywide celebration of art in our city, as well as the largest festival of art in Westchester County. Now last year, Yonkers Arts Weekend saw more than 150 local, regional, and international artists to our city to showcase their work and brought thousands of residents and visitors to check it all out. So Chris, what kind of turnout can we expect this year for second annual Yonkers Arts Weekend? Well, I think what we're going to do this year is build upon the success of last year's event with FIT Urban Studio and Torch Gallery in New Jersey, and you're going to see um, an increase in the scope of the project. You're going to see people coming from the Bronx. You're going to see representation of artists from Bushwick and uh, from Brooklyn and some of these other areas where we're seeing a, a natural influx of Gen Y coming to the city already. Um, and that's, of course, building um, in, con in uh, collaboration with the, the local artists that we have. We have um, hundreds of artists that will be represented, about 300 artists 
Um, so it's really an exciting project. And hey, if I want to turn to you to ask about the caliber of art and artists that we can expect. Certainly a big number, but talk about some of like, the renowned names people might be familiar with. Well, some of the renowned names are the Martha Graham Dance Troupe, which has toured all over the world. and. Um, they really kind of highlight the difference in this year between last year in the sense that last year we really sought out some incredible artists who absolutely wanted to be involved when they heard about it. But this year, artists are calling us and saying, how can I be involved? We, we're interested in Yonkers. It's a wonderful location. So we have very big names like Naomi Shelton and the Gospel Queens, International Gospel Singer Group. We have Black Taxi from Brooklyn. We have Grammy-nominated Tim Armacost. So we have some incredible performers as well as internationally renowned visual artists that are coming to showcase their work in some of the pop-up galleries that we have going on. In addition, something a little bit different this year which is incredible is that throughout the weekend, we have 20 art workshops that parents and families and adults can attend in Vanderdonk Park and everything throughout the weekend. The performances, the art, the galleries, everything is free. And certainly there's a lot going on, so let's try to break it down for some people. May 1st through 3rd, so starting Friday, what's something that you just can't miss? Friday. So Friday night we have the mayor's opening and that's going to feature Black Taxi, an incredible and just getting hotter by the minute uh, band from Brooklyn. And they're not to be missed. They're a dance band, but they're they're just really fun for everybody. So let's talk Saturday now. I know they're just jam-packed with activities, but if you had to pick one, maybe each of you pick one, <laughs> what would it be? I know that's hard to ask you. Well, for me, it would be Color Run. Color Run is happening to open up all of the events Saturday morning. And that's a slow-paced race around Vanderdonk, but it's it's in a t-shirt in which volunteers will, sh will shower you with Rangoli powder. And in the end of the race, you're covered in neon, a non-irritant vegetable powder, and you look amazing. And you look like you're going to an arts festival. Right, what a good way and to take it off. Yes, <laughs> just not to be missed. And Chris? Uh, I would say, I'm partial to the waterfront, but I would say that Main Street would not is something that should not be missed because we're gonna have a series of um, schools coming in like FIT, Purchase, Hunter College, Pratt, and it'll be a great way for kids in the area and around the city who are interested in the art in a, at a higher level, at the institution level, that could interact with teachers, professors, people that could be teaching them one day. And Sunday, certainly the hot item is the fashion show. Can you talk about that at Untermeyer? Of course. Yeah, the fashion show is going to be great this year. It's expanded uh, from last year into a four-part series. It's going to be really exciting and we you know, would encourage anybody who's interested in fashion or just being outside, hopefully it will be a nice day um, to come for free again and, um, and see these wonderful dresses. And one thing that I would just like to add is that, you know, we're so excited and we're talking about all these major headliners and big names that are coming, but the other thing that we've done is, is been really mindful of the local talent that we have. So we've really done a huge outreach so that the community is really aware of the wonderful local artists that live right here in our community and the kinds of offerings that are here 365 days a year and not just during the Arts Festival. Yeah. It's important to note because as much fun as Arts Weekend is going to be, there, like you said, 364 other days of the year that Yonkers does have art and art to talk about. So be sure to check out Yonkers Arts Weekend, May 1st through 3rd, along Yonkers Historic Waterfront at the Hudson River Museum, Untermeyer Gardens, and Yoho Artist Studios. For a full list of events, you can visit YonkersNY.gov or Yonkers Arts Weekly on Facebook. Chris and Haifa, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having You're us. You're welcome. Thank well, you. Well, that'll do it for another edition of Yonkers This Week. I'm Ali Mudano. See you next time.